Hi, this is Neil with Rock Our World. I've been away from my computer for over a week. Our house is in disarray as we go through renovations and preparations. Anyway, that's my excuse. I've had this on my heart for most of the past week and a half or two weeks that I would go back over the two houses of Israel, who they are, and which is a foundation and a building block on who the two witnesses are. So I, I think uh, in a sense this will be uh, partly testimony, kind of go through the, the journey God took myself and my wife through, and hopefully that's helpful for anyone out there that doesn't know who the two houses of Israel are and has never been taught these things. The, the Christian church by and large does not teach these foundational things. They don't under, know them, understand them, so then they don't teach them. And, and really for the most part the, the Christian church has said, oh we're a bunch of Gentiles and God must have given up on the Israelites, who they confuse with the Jewish people. The Jewish people are only part of the whole house, uh, the whole nation of Israel, the, the 12 tribes. The Jewish people are only the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, and then they are, we, we say there's a half of the Levites amongst them, just to I uh, make it simple, uh, Levites are scattered amongst all the tribes. So when we get to the final analysis found in Revelation where the bride is listed uh, as the 12 tribes, there's 12,000 from each tribe, uh, and we're missing the, the tribe of Dan, and we've added in the tribe of Manasseh, the half-tribe of, tribe of jo Joseph. Anyway, I've gone through these things in a number of different ways over the years, but um, in trying to correct what the, the Christian church has mistaught, I have to kind of unravel a few things. So when people come to the uh, Revelation 7, uh, 7, 1 to 8, they're thinking, oh, well, these are a bunch of Jews. No, the, the Jewish people are two and a half tribes. And then the, uh, what is called the house of Israel is the other ten and a half. And uh, anyway, rather get bogged down with numbers here, let's get back to now where did this all begin? So this would be your homework. If you read all of First Kings 12, you will see where the two houses of Israel originated. And remember, this is God's plan. God doesn't do things accidentally. There's not glitches that come along that he doesn't know how to fix. He, uh, I've said this a number of times, he has plan A and he makes plan A work. There's no plan B or C. No, that's me speaking, but uh, God has unlimited ability, so we don't have to deal with problems that come up in his plan, or he doesn't have to deal with them. So anyway, if you read for all of 1 Kings 12, we'll see how one nation of 12 tribes, and thir the 13th one would be the tribe of the Levites, who are the priestly tribe, so they're set apart as the priests and the teachers and to this day that's who they are let's, let's always bear in mind that God is an unchanging God he doesn't as I just said doesn't make a plan and then have to make adjustments in it because it's not working out he has chosen Israel as the who he's going to work with first and then he is going to add in the Gentile nation so there's a lot of uh, 
theology to unravel here, and I'll, I'll uh, I won't hit all the points. I will make it brief to fit it into whatever this turns out to be. Hopefully, under forty minutes. So read all of First Kings twelve. You'll see where the uh, the northern tribes, which eventually became called Samaria, uh, where they revolted against the leadership in Jerusalem, uh, which was the king, the kingly tribe, Judah. Uh, remember, we go back to David and then Solomon, and uh, then we come into the time of Rehoboam and Jeroboam. And Jeroboam led a rebellion and he established four things, if you will read in, chap in uh, verses 28 to 33. These are the sins of Jeroboam, but they are also the sins. If you follow through the history, they are, to this day, the sins of the Christian church. So, this is, in a nutshell, what happened. Uh, God became... Um, uh, he, he he couldn't handle their sins anymore, <laughs> and this again is his plan. And he sent the house of Judah uh, into captivity in uh, Babylon, and he sent the house of Israel into captivity in Assyria. Now the Jewish people were allowed to come back in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, but as it, as it reports to us, the house of Israel became scattered to the nations and they lost, uh, they lost the understanding of who they were. They became lost. They're lost sheep. And that's where this terminology came from. They're the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, if you read all of your scriptures, which you, you're supposed to do and I'm supposed to do, and you read them enough times, you're familiar with all the content, then you can follow along what God has said about this lost, uh, these lost people. They're not lost to God. He, he tells us that over and over. He doesn't lose sight of. He doesn't lose uh, uh, lose them. He's uh, a God who can't do things like that. He knows everything. So he kept track of all the Israelites, even though they were the house of Israel, let's say. Yeah. Even though they were scattered to the nations, they lost, they lost understanding of who they were many generations, for many generations, but God knew exactly where they all were. And uh, as you follow along the history in, in Scripture, eventually a few of them were brought back to what we then call Samaria, and and that's the setting that Yeshua came into when he was born, and uh, grew up and and uh, went through his ministry and so on. Called his twelve disciples. He said twice, "I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel." But now back up a little bit in the in the history. A few of the people were brought, likely from Assyria, before they were completely dispersed to the nations of the world. Uh, the, there was a a medley of people brought back to Assyria, and that's who was living there when Yeshua walked the earth, and they were regarded as a as a bunch of uh, mongrels by the Jewish people. They were looked down upon, and that's, if you remember the story of the Good Samaritan, that's uh, the background And when Yeshua was telling this story, that this good person from Samaria was very likely an Israelite, but he didn't know he was an Israelite. Anyway, this is the background, and uh, so then in what we call the New Testament, what Christians call the New Testament, they've been told over and over while we're talking about Gentiles and 
And the truth is they were talking about the Samaritans who were a mixture of all kinds of people, including Israelites. So when Yeshua said twice, and this is in Matthew 10, 6, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's who he's referring to. He went, his intention was to gather these lost sheep. And then again in Matthew 15, 24, Yeshua said this a second time. And in most uh, translations, they add a comment about the, the Gentiles in Matthew 15, 24, which is not in the original. So that was added in uh, as many, many uh, additions, deletions, corruptions were were added to the Greek versions of what we call the New, what the Christian Church calls the New Testament. We'll call them the Apostolic Writings, and they were not faithfully uh, translated into Greek. So. We need to go back to the original Aramaic, and I've pointed you towards a, a uh, work that was done by Andrew Roth called the Aramaic English New Testament. Hopefully that uh, you can find a copy of that. I actually have about 10 copies, and I would be happy to share with anyone. You'll have to figure out how to, if you... Uh, give me some kind of a address to send you one I would be happy to do that anyway uh, Satan went to great lengths to cloud this issue and convince so-called Christians that they are Gentiles now in Hebrew Gentile means separated from God so don't ever call yourself a Gentile and the process goes like this, that uh, as soon as you become a believer and you begin obeying God, you become an Israelite and you become a member of one of the tribes of Israel. And uh, very likely you are already a descendant of the, of the original people that were taken to Assyria and scattered to the nations because that's what Yeshua said. He said he came only for these lost sheep. If he found you, then you're a lost sheep. So, now let's re take an another look at uh, Christian teaching that the word they're using for Gentile is not going, which is the Hebrew meaning separated from God. They were referring to this mixture of people in Samaria and there were definitely uh, people from the house of Israel amongst them. But they didn't know who they were. They had gone through this long history beginning with Jeroboam here. They were taught sins right from day one. Jeroboam was a sinner. What he did is he, he uh, if you read from verse, in 1 Kings 12 from 28 to 33, he instituted things that were sins in the Christian church uh, they commit these sins to this day. They do not follow the Torah of Yeshua and his father. And just as Yeshua said, do not think a king to do away with the Torah. And if you break the least commandment of the Torah and teach others to do the same, you will be considered the least in the kingdom of God. So that's a, I'll just leave it there. That's a brief uh, background on who are, I'll add one more thing, uh, who are Gentiles. Uh, the, the concept that a Gentile is allowed into the camp of Israel and become an Israelite was established right from the beginning when they left Egypt. As it said, there was, uh, when the 600,000 men over that's how they counted the, the people, 600,000 men over 20 years of age, or 20 and over. So there was, who knows, 3 to 6 million people there. There was a mixed multitude that came with them, and that, those were 
true Goyim. But they had witnessed the true God doing amazing things, and they had witnessed that the gods of Egypt were impotent, couldn't do anything, and they chose to, to uh, change camps. And the Lord gave them instructions on how to become an Israelite. And they were actual Israelites from that point on. They were given status in one of the tribes and they became one of the uh, members of Israel. They were not Gentiles anymore. So anyway, that's an added feature of God's, uh, what he put in place in his plan. So no, Gentiles are not barred from the kingdom, but he's, he made it very clear. He's working first with Israel and there will come a point very soon when the floodgates are open for the Gentiles to come in. And that is found in Matthew 24, 14, and then Revelation 14, 6 to, we'll say about 17. Read that whole uh, group of uh, scriptures there when God says that the good news of the kingdom, not the gospel, but the good news of the kingdom, we preached to the whole world, to every tribe, to every language, every group, everyone on earth will hear this message and they will have the opportunity to believe and follow the Lord or disregard the message and continue in their evil, unrepentant state. And that is directly ahead of us. That, uh, as I've been teaching, this is my uh, estimation of the time frame we're in, that next spring on Lamb Selection Day, which is the 10th day of the first month on God's calendar, will be the 1260 days uh, since the tribulation started on October 2nd, 2017. And that is the day the bride will be chosen. The same day the bridegroom was chosen, 2,000 years ago. And uh, that is the point where the two witnesses who are the two houses of Israel begin their job to teach and preach and witness to the whole world. But they will bring the truth not this mixture of truth and error that both the Christian and Jewish churches participate in uh, presently. Okay, so uh, now backing this up somewhat, we got two houses of Israel. Remember that what the time frame we're in right now is the time of the restoration of all things. That when I started this YouTube channel five years ago, almost, uh, that just came to me in an instant when we were setting it up. My son-in-law was helping me uh, set this YouTube channel up and and he, I didn't know how you do any of this stuff. And he said, well, you need a, a bit of a description. It would be sort of like a subtitle. Uh, the title of of the channel is Rock Our World, the rock being Yeshua, and our world being rocked, like rocked to its foundations in all kinds of ways. And the subtitle was to uh, keep keeping believers up to date with what has be, been restored so far in the restoration of all things. Now that is a direct reference to Acts 3.21, but read that whole section in there uh, in Acts 3 uh, where it basically says that Yeshua cannot come back and I'm speaking up as a thief in the night to get his bride until everything's been restored. That might be overstated but this is the time right now that everything's being restored. Now this is my uh, explanation, my time frame, that about 1995, the restoration of all things really intensified, right in the mid-90s. Now, 
We could argue that Yeshua began that restoration. He surely taught his 12 disciples everything that was true, and that was a full picture. But at the same time, we realize that they didn't understand a lot of things because they didn't have the Holy Spirit. So anyway, that was supplied, and it was the Holy Spirit that would teach us all things. Anyway, um, about 1995, there were a number of things that opened up. Uh, one of them was the, the extensive revelation that uh, God gave all of us through Rick Joyner. And I've continually encouraged people to read that compilation called the Final Quest Trilogy. It's a, it's a uh, revelation written in a metaphoric form of how the Great Tribulation unfolds. And it gives you a heads up of how to avoid the minefield that we have to walk through. God is looking for a remnant. And a remnant is a tiny little bit of, of whatever the whole is. And the whole is the church, what we call the church. And he's looking for those few people who will uh, navigate through this minefield. And it begins with reading the scriptures, all of them, right from Genesis to Revelation, enough times that you're familiar with the content. And then use the tools uh, that God gave us to come to understand what they mean. The Holy Spirit being the most important ingredient after you've read them. Holy Spirit can't help you too much if you refuse to read the scriptures. So you read them, you ask the Holy Spirit to explain them to you, you fast, you pray, and you study, and you meditate. And meditate simply is thinking about the things of God. Uh, in the time where you're working every day, when your hands are occupied with other things, your mind is always on something. We have to train our minds to stay off worthless endeavors. Our mind is always active, so train it. Bring every thought into captivity. Do your very best to train your mind to go to the things of God, so that as you do your work every day, your mind is solving problems. And the Holy Spirit's there, ready to put the pieces together for you, if you will train your mind to stay on task. So, uh, and then the last tool is the voice of God itself. You, you want to learn to hear the voice of God, and that is metaphoric. The, the Lord teaches us things in a thousand different ways. And you, it happens when you do all those things that I just went through. You and I. So, about the mid-90s, the, the restoration of all things really sped up. And there was two books written about the mid-90s, about 1995. One was by Ed Chumney, Eddie Chumney. It was called Restoring the Two Houses of Israel. And the other one was written by Batcha Wooten with the help of her husband, Angus. And they wrote, Who is Israel? So those two books were instrumental for me to understand who the two houses of Israel are. Now, back this story up, this is my testimony. When I was first arrested by God, and I was told by the church I was going to, the Worldwide Church of God, I was told, you make sure you read the scriptures every day. You read all of them from Genesis to Revelation and you believe them all. They're all truth, not, not the story the Christian church teaches. That the Old Testament, so-called, which it is not, is uh, of less importance and done away with. And that the New Testament, so-called, which it is not, 
is of great importance comparatively. Those things are all lies that the angel of light supplied for us. The, an the angel of light, Satan and devil, is the leader of all the churches of this world, including Christianity and Judaism. Now, that being said, we have the option of not believing what we're taught, but agreeing with what God wrote in his word. We have that option. So that's our challenge. Read it for yourself. Uh, use all those tools and come up with your own opinions on things and uh, ask the Holy Spirit to supply the knowledge and the truth and to solve the mysteries. The Lord wants us to solve the mysteries that are written in Scripture. They weren't written as mysteries to remain mysteries. And he had a time frame and he, his time frame included that as we got closer and closer to the end of time and the beginning of the kingdom that he would supply the solutions to the mysteries. But we have to have our ears open. We have to have the heart, the soft heart. That the Lord can write things on. We have to be in in contact with the Lord himself, not with religion. And uh, so anyway, back to this. This is my testimony. I, When I read those two books, it uh, brought me up to the next level of understanding because I already knew that everything God wrote, I didn't finish my train of thought, backing up a little bit here, uh, when I started reading the scriptures, I was immediately attracted to the, the, the whole subject of the last days, the book of Revelation and the prophets, which are the building blocks that we need to understand the book of Revelation. And everything written about the last days by God, by the Lord, is addressed to two groups of people, the house of Israel and the house of Judah everything. And then a third group, the Gentiles, are referred to, and again, as Hebrew says, they are separated from God. God will open those doors during the Great Tribulation. But at this point, he's working with Israel first. So who is this house of Israel? Many people can grasp that the house of Judah are the Jewish people, and will dispel that idea that the Jewish people are of all the tribes. No, there are those two and a half. Where are these lost sheep? Well, Yeshua said he came to find them. So if he found you, you're a lost sheep. Uh, Cornelius was a lost sheep. He thought I was a Gentile. And I'm going to say Peter and Paul thought he was a Gentile. Peter did. But Yeshua had already said I come, I came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So who are we going to believe? Yeshua or modern Christian teaching? Now back again to this journey. So I already knew that God was speaking to two groups of people. I didn't know who they were. I had a, I think I had a, a at least a good idea, a vague somewhere between a good and a vague idea that the Jewish people were this uh, house of Judah. But who's this house of Israel? Because that's all God's dealing with for the last days. And I want to be part of this. So anyway, I, uh, I think in the back, of, in my subconscious, I knew the answer, but I just needed somebody to say it. So when Eddie Chumney came along, he was the first guy. Uh, he'd written this book already, but he came to our little church in Weyburn that I was attending at the time, my wife and I, about the year, uh, I'm going to say it was, I'm going to say it was 98, somewhere in there, 1998. And he, when I read he, this book, he brought it with him. And I read that book and it answered so many questions and also the Who is the Bride of Christ answered so many questions that the Christian church 
couldn't teach in a way that made sense to me. Whatever they were teaching just didn't add up. And I think the background is when you read scripture uh, and, you know, read enough times, you're familiar with the content, and then you're told a theory that is wrong, it just won't make sense to you. So that's kind of the point I was at. So Eddie answered a lot of questions for me, but that was the that was the one I'm talking about in this episode. That the Christian church is the house of Israel. We are the lost sheep that Yeshua went out to find. Yes, we thought we were Gentiles, but it turned out we were not. We look, taste, and smell like Gentiles. We don't follow the Torah. We have no idea about these things because we lost it many, many generations ago. So now our challenge is, are we going to start obeying God? And uh, most believers in the Christian church are not taught to believe God. They're taught to believe religion. And they're not encouraged to read the scriptures, so then they don't, and I mean all of the scriptures all the way from Genesis to Revelation you have to do that and you have to have the Holy Spirit to explain it to you okay so now did I get all the background here so then in about 19 well for me it was 19 let's say it was 97 98 the light went on and then as uh, about the same time we became part of what was called the messianic movement we didn't I won't say we joined it per se, but we fellowshiped with a group uh, near our hometown here in, in southern Saskatchewan, Canada, and uh, the leaders of this group brought in uh, people like Eddie Chumney and uh, Bill Cloud and Brad Scott, those were, and Ralph Messer was another one. Uh, these are the ones my wife and I learned the most from. And uh, anyway, the Messianic movement, in my opinion, restored more truth to the church than any other movement in all of the course since Yeshua walked the earth, course of time. And uh, it was not embraced very readily by the what we call the church, the Christian church, but there was a remnant, always a remnant. And then the whole movement was taken off track, as every other movement of God has always been taken off track by men, which, again, is part of God's purpose. But there's one movement left, and it's going to start next spring, and it will not be taken off track. It is the fulfillment of the riding of the white horse, of the, the fulfillment of the coming of the spirit of Elijah, the coming of the spirit of John the baptizer. The Torah of the Lord will be restored. That is what the white horse is. And, uh, in my journey and the door that opened for me, that started five years ago. So we've been doing it here in Saskatchewan for five years. And I'm, the Lord has a perfect plan. So he's got a plan for every other part of the world. And, of course, this YouTube can go to every part of the world, more or less. So it is the Lord who opens doors. And uh, that's actually a direct reference right to the Church of Philadelphia. And I'm going to say the Church of Philadelphia is the bride and the bridesmaids and whoever else allows the Lord to soften their hearts and participate in this last day work. It's going to be a great work, but it in, is in the midst of a very, very trying time. And anyone that's watching the world around them, we know that uh, things are going from bad to worse rapidly. That in this, even this one week that I didn't get near my computer. There's so many things that have happened around this world. The, 
the, the bad weather just intensifies the, the uh, seismic activity inside the earth is just growing exponentially the, the troubles in the Middle East are heating up rapidly there is judgment coming upon many many nations around this world including the United States and Canada the COVID-19 pandemic is is exploding our uh, even in our little quiet corner of this little province in the world in Canada of a million people every time we go to our our uh, provincial capital it's just a 40 mile drive for us uh, every time we go there there's more and more businesses closed because the economy is failing and now the schools have been closed and I I dare say they will never open again until the kingdom comes and of course uh, in between we're going to see the ravages of World War III but we will see the kingdom come and we will see the Lord come and dry every tear from our eyes and uh, all the trauma that the whole world all almost 8 billion people has had to endure will be become a memory and uh, in fact we will learn to celebrate the great tribulation which is done every year when we count out the seven sevens between the feast of first fruits and the feast of weeks that is the celebration every year of the Great Tribulation, starting with uh, celebrating Yeshua's resurrection on the Feast of First Fruits. He was the first of the first fruits. And then God uses the 49 years of the Great Tribulation to, to bring out of the woodwork to create, I've always said to create them. What he's doing is he's, he's softening the hearts of people so that they will become obedient to him. The very first ones are the bride, the 144,000. And then there's 10 times that number become the bride, the attendants, or the second group of first fruits. And then right near the end of the 49 year great tribulation, we will see the, the greatest contingent, the guests to the wedding, they will arrive in Israel, in Jerusalem. And there will be a great celebration on that on that Feast of Tabernacles on that 50th year. All the first fruits will be together. Okay, so now two minutes left. So with all that background, uh, I'm going to say it was uh, about 19 or sorry, uh, the year 2000 to 2002. We are we were at. Um, let's pick the second number. It was about there. Pat, my wife and I were at one of these Messianic meetings, and I'm, one of these guys were teaching, I'm going to say, whether it was Eddie Chumney or Bill Cloud or Brad Scott, who has just passed away this last summer, sadly, for us who were left behind. He was a good teacher. Uh, one of those three was teaching, and something they said, and we were you know, talking about and learning about the two houses of Israel and learning how the the Christians are the house of Israel and the Jewish people are the house of Judah. And my wife turned to me and said, those are who the two witnesses are. And as soon as she said that, it just clicked in my heart too. Yes, that was a revelation from the Holy Spirit. So then it remained to understand who the bride is, how the bride is made up of uh, 30,000 Jewish people. That's two and a half tribes. And they're all listed in Revelation 7, 1 to 8. Uh, the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin and then half the Levites. That's how you end up with 30,000 Jewish people. And then 114,000, the balance, being Christians. 
or the house of Israel from these other nine and a half tribes because we've we've uh, did I get my numbers right yep because we have excluded the book of uh, book <laughs> the uh, the tribe of Dan and I proposed a solution to why Dan is missing if you go back quite a number of it was about this time last year I we were down in California and I studied uh, the books uh, of the history of I guess it was Joshua in the book of Joshua when the tribes were commanded to go and occupy their territory the tribe of Dan was completely 100% disobedient so disobedience always brings a curse into our lives and uh, the basic uh, instructions of God are to keep his commandments the Torah contains them all and if you do not obey the teachings and instructions of the Lord meaning the Torah then you will have curses and eventually death in your life and if you will obey the Lord you will have blessings and eventually you will have life with a capital L that is eternal life so I'm going to call that a wrap I will write missing details if I pick any out in my commentary so please remember to read the commentaries it takes me quite a while the average is about a week and uh, God bless you see you next time this is Neil with Rock Our World